Let's take some time to explain the application of the Hilbert time domain operator, um, the process used to calculate the quadrature trace using this uh, operator in the time domain. So here we've got the uh, operator, remember the Hilbert time domain operator uh, in the positive direction consists of uh, sample values that are have even um, values that are zero and um, uh, odd number values that are reciprocals of the uh, uh, of the odd numbers, one, one third, one fifth, one seventh, and so on. And in the negative direction, we have um, just the negative reciprocals of the odd numbers, minus one, one third, minus one fifth, and so on, with the uh, even numbered samples all equal to zero. Now the the output is at uh, at zero. And so when we're applying this uh, operator to the real, this would be the real real trace in this sense, we're really getting a, a sum of the contributions of all these sample values from the, from the real trace uh, output at this particular point. So it's uh, far from the output that you get on the quadrature trace that you calculated here. It's far from an instantaneous value, and we've kind of emphasized this uh, previously. So each of these each of these sample values that are output here are kind of a weighted, um, weighted sum of uh, uh, the uh, amplitudes along the um, along the seismic, the real seismic trace in the neighborhood of this output point. So, uh, so let's take a look at how we do that, and let's uh, to do this since this is a convolution. Let's come back and review this. Uh, this it's much like the uh, process we use to describe the construction of the uh, where remember if we um, we can simulate the seismic response using subsurface velocities and densities from from well logs so we have densities and velocities we take their product we get the acoustic impedance uh, because we have the velocities we can also convert uh, from depth to time uh, we calculate the reflection coefficients. Remember the impedances are, are z's and the reflection coefficient is just z2 minus z1 over z1 plus z2. And we have, we have the, that all explained in some uh, earlier videos. So we get the uh, reflectivity series and then we have a wavelet. The wavelet can be extracted from the data. Uh, it uh, could be zero phase, could be minimum phase. We could take some properties from the spectrum of the uh, seismic trace in order to uh, estimate the wavelet. And um, sorry about the construction noise outside. Uh, hopefully that's not too distracting. And then we take our wavelet and we hang it from each one of these reflection coefficients, scaling the wavelet by the um, amplitude of the reflection coefficient, and then we sum them all together. And that's illustrated in this in this slide here, where we have the, uh, you can see, well here's the reflectivity sequence, and um, <clears throat> the negative reflection coefficient, positive reflection coefficient. You can see a wavelet which is hung and scaled from this reflection coefficient another one in the positive direction so that we take off in the positive direction and then go negative. And we're doing that for each one of these reflection coefficients taking this um, taking this wavelet, hanging it uh, from each uh, reflection coefficient, scaling it by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. And then, so you can see all the wavelets that have been scaled by the reflectivity here. They're kind of makes a mess. They're all dropped on top of each other. But we sum all these together in order to get the uh, composite trace, the uh, seismic trace. In this case, the noise-free synthetic. And this is um, the process that we're using here. The, pro the process that we've described visually is a convolution process. So we have uh, the integral here from minus 15, or minus uh, infinity to infinity of the wavelet uh, times the reflectivity. And then this is our output uh, signal. So this is basically a statement, a mathematical statement of the superposition principle. 
um, scaling all of these wavelets by the reflection coefficients, um, summing them all together, uh, this integration here, in order to get the uh, uh, output signal. Now the process that we use in order to calculate the quadrature trace is almost identical. Well, it is identical, it's just we have different terms here. Uh, we calculated the seismic trace through the convolution of the wavelet with the reflectivity sequence. This is in discrete form. Remember, we're dealing with uh, sample data, so we have a set of numbers here. It's not an analytic function. And we'd be doing the same thing with the quadrature trace. This is the uh, Hilbert transform operator. And then this is the real um, seismic trace. The process that we're basically in a sequence of steps that, that we use in order to carry out convolution is a process of folding or flipping. In this case, we'll flip the reflectivity. We'll shift it, multiply, and then sum. And probably the best way to illustrate this is just to go through some uh, simple examples. Uh, notice that in the summation over here that tau increases from 0 to t for the wavelet and decreases from t in the reverse order through tau for the reflectivity. And then t is the particular sample time that we're looking at. So I have uh, two simple um, series here. The wavelet, um, three samples. The reflectivity sequence, three samples uh, with values. Uh, the wavelet with values 1, 2, and 1 and the reflectivity series with values of one, one fourth, one fourth, and one half. And these could be arbitrary times or they could be times zero, one, and two, for example. So what we do is we start with this uh, folding process or simply reversing the order. And we're rever reversing the order is, is stated here. We have uh, at a particular output time t equals zero. Uh, we're, we're looking backward in time along the reflectivity sequence. So this is basically equivalent to reversing the order of the reflectivity sequence. So whereas we you know, have a sequence that goes from one-fourth to one-fourth to one-half, here we're looking in the reverse direction, one-half, one-fourth, one-fourth, uh, at time t equals zero. And just noting here that we don't have any amplitudes here. Uh, you know, if we were to continue tau in um, uh, minus 1, minus 2. Uh, these are going to be 0. So we're going to re we've reverse the order and we're going to carry it through, we're going to multiply through, and this is just a, uh, an illustration of the multiplication. These are multiplication signs here, not x's. And uh, So we're taking 1 half times 0, 0. 1 fourth times 0 is 0. 1 fourth times 1 is 1 fourth. Then we sum them all together. So basically a multiplication and summation. This gives us the output at time 0 uh, for the signal value at t equals 0 equal to 1 quarter. So here we are shifting, multiplying, and summing. So we shift the reflectivity series again by one sample point. Um, we now carry out the multiplication. So we've got 0 times 1 half is 0. We've got 1 times a quarter is 1, one quarter, 1 fourth. Uh, 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. We sum all these together, we get 3 fourths. So the signal output at time t equal 1, s of 1 is equal to this sum, 3 quarters. Shift again, multiply and sum, and this is just a redundant process. We'll illustrate it through the sequence. Uh, we go through the multiplication. Um, one times one half is one half. Two times one fourth is one half. One times one fourth is one fourth. We sum those numbers together. We get one and a fourth. The signal output at time t equal two, s of two, one and one fourth. So this would be something to try to follow through on a piece of paper. We shift again, multiply, and sum. Uh, again, the multiplication process here, we've got 2 times 1 half is 1, 1 times 1 fourth, 0 times 1 fourth. Sum those together, we get 1 and a fourth. So the third signal 
or t equal 3 output is again 1 and 1 fourth and then we come up on our last one before the um, reflectivity sequence basically rolls out beyond the, uh, the wavelet uh, our last sample value here is 1 half these products are all 0 so we get 1 half plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 1 half and so the uh, signal output at time t equal 4 is equal to 1 half so we basically done all the calculations that we can because we get zeros on either side as we bring this reflectivity sequence through. So it's kind of a trivial um, uh, result after that. Notice that the wavelet consists of three samples, the reflectivity series of three samples. So the number of samples in the output is the sum of these two samples uh, minus one. So we, we should have five output samples. We have output samples one-fourth, three-fourths, five-fourths, five-fourths, and one-half. Uh, star again, remember this designates a convolution of these two. The signal is a convolution of the wavelet with the reflectivity sequence. And that convolution gives us a uh, time series that looks like this. For the uh, um, output time zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so here we're, we're going to be doing it um, uh, in an Excel spreadsheet where we've got the Hilbert transform, uh, Hilbert uh, time domain operator here, starting at minus one ninth. Uh, we get minus 0 0.11 going up to one ninth. This is the real seismic trace. And notice that in our first output here we have um, B13, that's this value over here, times C4. Now we're going to be coming in reverse order. So we have B14 on, on the real trace will be coming in reverse order. Remember this is uh, for, for the um, uh, calculation of the quadrature trace. This is uh, could, could be considered as the reflectivity sequence. In this case this is our um, real seismic trace. So we're coming backwards. B14, C4, B13, C5. So we're coming backwards on the real seismic trace. We're going forward on the uh, time domain operator and so on. Now if we calculate the full um, uh, see, you know, full convolution for an output here at um, C20, C22 uh, for the uh, operator and this output over here we're coming backwards again on the uh, it's pretty noisy out there today sorry about that uh, we've got um, on the uh, real seismic trace B31 down here times C4 the first point in the operator and then we're just kind of coming up backwards through the real seismic trace B30 um, forward on the uh, time domain operator and uh, all the way down to B13 times C22. And with these dollar signs in here, uh, we can basically copy this expression and uh, calculate the remainder of the values in order to get the full quadrature trace here. So this would be something that you could copy and just uh, click on and drag down through the uh, uh, quadrature trace that you want to calculate. So th this is something that you should be able to, to work through on your own here. Once you get the uh, quadrature trace, once you've calculated this, you can uh, calculate the, and here are the formula that, that, that we're using. Uh, here we're just taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the uh, real and the imaginary parts. The imaginary part again is the uh, quadrature, uh, quadrature trace. And uh, in an Excel formula, that would look like this. For the instantaneous phase, we have the inverse tangent of the imaginary or quadrature over the real part. This will be the quadrature, the values in the quadrature uh, time t over the, the real seismic trace at time t. Take the inverse of that in order to get the um, um, phase. And then for the uh, instantaneous frequency, uh, omega, we're taking the derivative of the phase with respect to time, but we have this factor of 2 pi in here because this gives the fraction of a full cycle. 
d phi is in radians, so we have the radians basically canceling out, and we have the fraction of a full cycle there. And for the derivative operation here, I've used uh, a simple forward derivative computation. You could do this in a reverse, um, as a reverse derivative or as a centered derivative. Um, I'm just using this uh, forward derivative operation here, phi of t plus um, delta t minus phi of t over 2 pi. Again, this factor of 2 pi uh, dt. And notice also in the Excel formula that when I take the uh, inverse tangent, uh, you know, if these values in the real trace happen to be zero, we need to add something in there to, um, uh, to keep it from blowing up. So I put a, a very, very small number in there to, um, to prevent that from happening. So as an exercise, I'd leave you with uh, this. It, it would take a little bit longer to go through what I did using the two, three sample series, but you know, here using a um, seven sample uh, Hilbert time domain operator and a, um, a five sample uh, real trace. So this will be the real seismic trace. And this will be the uh, uh, Hilbert uh, time domain operator. We've just carried that out to minus one third. So we have minus one and minus one third in the negative direction, one and one third in the positive direction. And remember what we need to do is we need to reverse the order of the seismic trace so that we're coming in from the end minus three-fourths minus one-third one one-half and the Hilbert time domain operator we take a normal order minus one-third zero minus one zero one zero one-third and then we just go through this multiplication process you can see one-half times uh, uh, minus one-third is going to give us a minus one-sixth we get, of course this is uh, rounded up rounded up uh, this will be 0 0.1667. Uh, slide this over, we get a 1 times a minus 1 third, and 1 half times 0. That gives us a minus third. So you can kind of see how this is going to work out. You don't need to put these stick diagrams together. To, to do this, you can just take this set of numbers here and, and uh, kind of shift it across the uh, Hilbert transform time domain operator and go through the multiplication process sum them all together in order to get the values in your uh, output quadrature trace. So this will be the real trace, uh, a very short one to be true, to be sure. This will be your quadrature trace. And uh, remember it has, we've, we've got, um, uh, let's see, one, two, three, we've got four samples here. We have, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, samples there, so so we should have a, a, a length of about uh, 10 samples, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've got 10 samples or the number in the number of samples in the real trace plus the number of samples in the time domain operator minus 1 is uh, 10. This is our quadrature trace and then this is the real trace uh, superimposed on the um, quadrature trace. So this would be the real and imaginary components that you could then use in order to calculate the uh, instantaneous frequency phase and uh, uh, amplitude. So I hope this helps uh, explain the time domain process that uh, we use in order to calculate the um, quadrature trace. I probably should go back here. I don't, I don't think I made a point out of this to, to do to do this for the longer operators, uh, we can use the convolution theorem instead of having to go through um, uh, go go through this laborious process in Excel. You can simply uh, take the Fourier transforms of both the uh, real trace and the time domain operator, uh, multiply them in the frequency domain, and then take the inverse Fourier transform in order to come up with the quadrature trace. That's something we probably need to, to review uh, at some point. But uh, uh, again, I hope this helps explain the time domain process uh, used to calculate the quadrature or the imaginary trace. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for joining us.